Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. I'm on one, Dan. Yeah, you had a little meeting yesterday with the I'm on one. school board. What's I that did. guy's name? I did. Matthew Cropper is his name. I am on one. What is it? Cropper GSI Consulting? It is. Out it of is, uh, uh, Ohio? Cropper GSI Consulting out of Delaware, Ohio. Yeah, you can get fucked, guy. Uh, 614-451-1242. We'll put that number in the, uh, in the description as well. We will. We will. We, uh, we had a cruise, D'Anthony, um, that we just got back from. A cruise on the sea that took out not only our hearts and minds, but also our legs. That was the last day was choppy. It was a little choppy. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think we went through a storm or something. We did. There's a there's currently a tropical depression that is rolling mm. through Texas right now. So we were catching the the front end of those waves. Yeah. But I've been a little uh, herky jerky the last couple of days. It doesn't really affect me. I don't know why. Probably because I'm a fucking android or something. What did affect me were those two assholes that got arrested. Uh, not from our group, by the way. No yep. one from our group got in any trouble that I'm aware of. No, they did not. Um, some dudes may be in trouble with their wives when they go back home. Boy. Uh, not because of philanderous activity, just because they're going to be pieces of shit for the next week because i feel like shit too oh man it, it, the, it, was, the a long, it was a long way long travel to take the edge off is to uh, to obviously keep drinking yeah, you just but, gotta keep going yeah uh first and foremost everybody who came out to the cruise all the drinking bros man that was fun as fuck yeah and it was we great were definitely planning another one i did not expect it to go that well no i mean look uh it, it was everything came off without a hitch there were a couple of hiccups the first two days carnival fucked up and didn't have bartenders for our private room yeah, but that was Which for an cool. hour, and it was like, eh, yeah. it is what it is. And then is. we just went and got shit house. And then they, they, they comped us, what, something like 100 bottles of champagne the next night. It was night, a lot, so yeah. I, I and don't then they gave us free drinks that. on day four as Yeah, well. so I, I, they were fine. Um, yeah, all they, of that was fine. When you're dealing with that many people, uh, shit gets wild. And, uh, you know, it was an hour without drinks. And, yeah. yes, to us, that's a big deal. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, they were, they were rad, and they gave us a bunch of uh, champers uh, yeah. for free. But the other awesome thing to me um, is how amazing this fucking community is. Like, yeah. If you get that much testosterone together in any other environment, there's fight, like, especially with the booze. Yeah. Fights break out. People get pissy with each other. Here, it seemed like, and all the people who are talking about it on in the Facebook groups right now yeah. are the same. They're like, wow, I can't believe how we all just became friends immediately and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's had a good time. There's no assholes for the most part. Yeah, and you feel like you know each other already and like, you know, who we are in the show is who we are in real life. Yeah. Jared was... Ooh, he was in rare form. Wow. Yeah. Next level. Especially Jared. the uh, especially on Sunday. Oof. So here's... Absolutely here's, no one. Here's Wonderwall. Do you want to get into what happened? So... Jared, Fire away. Jared, I mean, look, we can start with the strip club <laughs> show because that aired on Monday night. Okay, we'll come back to impromptu, the last day, yeah. right? That was the the night before the cruise. You and I had flown in. We were like, "Hey, man, we're just gonna get a little sleep before yep. things get rowdy tomorrow." Uh, we show up in the lobby. There is sixty drinking bros saying we're all going to a strip club. Yeah, and they drank all the booze at the hotel as well. Out of it. Yeah, they they were sold out of it. Yep. Um, the hotel could not have been happier. By the way, yes, they were. They like, gave me free coffee the next morning. Dude, they're like, "Look, you guys, guys drink can come so back much. anytime." We go to a strip club in Houston on a Wednesday. Was it a Wednesday night? Yes. Um, Wednesday night in Houston near the airport. Strip club. Uh, a, a, a young gentleman, a young squire. Hunter Lomax. Yes. Is his name. Had uh, about $2,500 in ones that he pulled out of nowhere. Yeah, and bricks, bricks that were stuffed down the front of his pants. Plastic bricks. And, and look, he, before we even got to the strip club, he may have already been intoxicated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he just starts firing these around, and these girls are on their hands and knees like hungry, hungry hippos, scooping in money. I'm like, oh, man. I kept feeling these tiny hands on my feet, and yeah. I finally looked down, and I realized I was standing on about $18 in ones. $18, dude. That's a car pay. Nope. nope. But boy, it was. Lunch? They were scooping it up like it was the last loaf of bread in Afghanistan. And it, was, it was a little depressing, to be honest, but they were fucking super was it? nice. Was it? They were super nice. They were super I mean, nice. They were just... One of them fucked a drinking bro, I believe, yes. in the corner of the room. So. In front of uh, everyone. Well, there's only like 60 people there. It's not that many people eh, to fuck in front of. But, uh, but in front of everyone. You and yes. I have fucked in front of more people than that. I don't mean you and I have fucked each other in front of more sure, people. Sure, sure, sure. But we will. For sport, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, for sport. Um, but uh, that all went 
down and then we you know got back to the hotel at around the two-ish range and then the the boat took off Oof. um the following day and i was like man how do we how do we top last night how well here's we- how we topped it ross yeah ross angeles uh a woman shows up so we do a meet and greet on the first day everybody gets on the boat puts all their shit away Later in the after, I think it was like, what, 5 o'clock, mm-hmm. 5 or 6 p.m.? Yeah, yeah. Have a little meet and greet. We don't actually do a show or anything. We just, we're hanging out with all the drinking bros in a private room. Yes. Um, and pretty Getting much drunk, e- pretty much fun. everybody is there because no one's gotten too wild yet because the crowds do get thinner as days go on. And that was smart of Carnival to do it that at that time. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody was relatively sober, just yep. gotten on the boat. We yep. got to meet everybody, hang out with everybody, and then we all went to... Various bars yes. and uh, got absolutely rocked. Um, there was a girl, and then we're going we're to play this episode, uh, and I, I hope this audio is on there. That's why I'm telling you now, because I'm not sure if it is. There was a couple. Uh, I'm going to find her name. Find her name. Um, she had a, uh, a vibrating butt plug in, and uh, her husband, it was voice activated, so he had it, an app on his cell phone for this butt plug on stage. Um, that she was on, and uh, that was the first time I'd seen anything like that. The closest I've ever been to AI, by the way. Yeah, so basically you talk into the phone, and it turns your voice into vibrations that go into her anal cavity. Yes. So Yeah. Pretty, um, pretty who, great. Is it Mattel? Who makes that? Is it Mattel? Or uh, Hasbro? Man, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Probably not? Okay. No. I Just checking. I wasn't sure which toy company made that. It's definitely um, a toy company, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Adam and Eve on that one, but... Uh, that started the literally the opening of the meet and greets, and then after that, another couple had just screamed out, "Look, we're looking to swing if anybody's down with that." And uh, they were giving out room numbers and everything else. A lot of things went on. The on young the lady's name is uh, Taylor Miller. Taylor Miller. Taylor uh, B. Miller. Real shot of life that Taylor Miller. Super cute too. Yeah, I know. Very cute girl. Uh, her husband or boyfriend or whatever. He was rad. He's a jacked up dude. Yeah, nice beard on him. He was yeah, a good looking jacked dude. Up Duck, Duck Dynasty, yeah. dude, uh, great guy. Um, we hung, we had him hanging out with them for a while. Like it just got crazy. And then day after day after day, like day drinking, partying, live shows, fuckery. Uh, that that couple did meet someone to swing with. Am I, am I allowed to say that? You can say whatever you want. This is America, Ross. Probably we're right? not in Mexico anymore. Yeah, we're not in Mexico. That couple did find another couple to swing with, and everybody, again, was friendly and cordial and polite. I don't know if anybody went home with diseases. I don't have access to We that won't info. know for a couple of weeks if anybody's pregnant or has diseases. No. We'll find out, and we'll let you guys know. And I've only played a doctor in, in movies uh, a couple times, so not one in real life, so I can't diagnose anything. Uh, and then two people that were not with our group, ironically, got arrested at the end of the cruise. Yeah, for uh, failure to pay child support. Apparently, they had open warrants. So here's a no tip. No way. Oh, yeah, pro tip for you guys out there in the audience. If you have open warrants, don't go on a cruise where you have to come back through customs, you fucking dummy. Well, see, here's the thing. I didn't know that. Um, well, now I, you know. Because my thing is this. Why do you let people rage all week and then arrest them right when they to get To make off? them more docile? Really? Like it, when, when they check in through customs the first time, mm-hmm. it doesn't hit the system until probably 45 minutes later. So some, some, no one's going to notice it for a little while. Ah. Then you're out at sea. You're not going to fucking do an interdiction at sea. Just let them do their thing and then come back. I guess. Could you imagine being that hungover off a cruise and then just being cuffed up going to uh, federal penitentiary? Here's what I can't imagine. I can't imagine having a child and not paying for it. Yeah. So well, fuck both of those guys. Is that what it was for? Is that yeah. right? No way. Yep. So they kept calling out these two guys. Timothy name. Person yeah. and uh, Keith something or Keith Brown, Keith I think. Keith Brown or yeah. something. Over and over and over again. And they were like, look, we cannot leave. No one can leave the ship uh, of the 3,000 people can leave the ship until both of these motherfuckers are found. Yeah. And their friends were trying to hide them on yeah. the boat. It turns out that uh, they were near. So they were calling them to customer service on on deck three. Okay. And. There were like nine of their buddies standing around them in a circle trying to hide them from the authorities. Like, Oof. What, did, what did you think was going to happen? They were just going to give up at some point? Jump off the Yeah, fucking jump deck. off the boat, brother. Jump off the Lido deck, brother. <laughs> Swim to Well, us. Lido's 10. You don't want to go off that uh, deck. You can. You can and you can't. Uh, jump <laughs> off that deck, though, and get yourself out of there. It, it was a quick swim down the dock somewhere else. It wasn't, wasn't real. Um, wasn't real sure what the fuck they were doing with that. Like, unless they just couldn't swim. 
I would have gone that route and then gone in. Right? Yeah, but there's life jackets everywhere, dude. Yeah. So that's not even really an excuse. I, I, you could get one for your a regular life jacket and then both arms and both legs if you're that afraid. Yeah. You could have, you could have wrapped up all the way oh, around yeah. like the Michelin man and just jumped into the ocean. The point of all of that is is that they cost us about two hours of our lives just sitting there. On, on the cruise ship. Yeah, yeah it was terrible. That, that was the only thing that was, that was bad. Everything else was a blast. Yeah, it was um, great. We're planning another one next year in Miami. Uh, Danny Warsnap. God damn, that guy's talented. Yeah, he's the, he's the best. Yeah. Hopefully he, the audio came back clean from those guys. He um, managed to keep it together while JT was singing uh, behind him. Yeah. You know, with, when he maybe shouldn't. So let me go back to that. <laughs> so we did... Um, Jared was his best Jared. He was, he was fucking France Press Jared. That's yeah. what we all know and love. Full um, France <clears throat> best. So on Thursday, like I said, do the meet and greet. The thing was like 6 p.m. Then we all go out, get fucked up, hang out. Yeah. Saturday, like 11 o'clock in the goddamn morning. I don't know why they scheduled it in. Or Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning. Smart, I think. I think it was smart of them. Probably for day one because everybody goes hard day one. Yes. Um, so we do a show. Danny, yep. uh, Matt, and JT play some songs and stuff. It was pretty fun. Um, and then... We uh we did a live podcast. Yeah, very fucking funny. Very good. We we enjoyed ourselves quite a bit. Got some of the audience members involved. Yeah, things got um, out of hand again. Um, I believe uh, there was I, a I, woman wearing your bathing a bathing suit of just your your face. Yeah, over on like yeah. it had about sixty four of your heads. On it was it was horrifying and flattering at the same time. So what yeah, are you gonna do. Uh, and then you know Saturday we did a show later in the day. We did, it was, yeah. It was good again. Um, Went to Mexico on Saturday morning and got yep. trashed. Just absolutely trash. Then Sunday... Um, I went... By the way, I went full Mexico experience. No, you didn't. You I walked did. to the end of the pier and bought a t-shirt. Nope. Uh, I got it. I, so I rented a Jeep. Did uh, you really? Yeah. Bought, brought, uh, we bought some drugs from a stranger. Oh, you did, but I don't think they're real drugs, yeah. unfortunately. I, got, it, it, was a, it was a dicey sitch where yeah. it came with the Jeep where it was like, well, I'm not going to say no to the drugs, but I don't know what these are. Can you imagine? Let's start a let's start uh, enterprise rental car style situation. For drugs. But it's like you get a car and there's like a bag of cocaine in there. Yeah. That would be a great way to start your trip. Fuck yeah, it would. And this, it's only in Vegas. Here was the craziest thing about it is the guy who said, you know, I sell the Jeeps. I'm the Jeep guy on the island or whatever. Uh, he takes my, my license and he comes back maybe 15 minutes later. Um, and he goes, car will be like right here. The, you know, whatever. This is sweet Mexican accent I just gave you. But uh, Yeah, that was the worst Mexican accent of all you're welcome. time. You're welcome for all my gifts. And he comes back and he's on the phone and he goes, yeah, yeah, she'll be right up. And I was like... Is she the Jeep or yeah. is she someone else? It was his fucking sister who gets out of the car. <laughs> this Jeep was 1982, had tarp over the top of it. Um, she was like, look, if it rains, would you, you know, mind just pulling the tarp in through the windows? And I was like, great. And then, uh, and then she had drugs in the glove compartment. She was like, you know, you can buy whatever drugs you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got that, that whole thing. Uh, went is, down it, is it like a fucking... Uh the mini bar in a hotel where whatever drug, there's a weight 100%. thing and whatever yep. drugs you take out. So any pills charged. were in bottles um, and uh, weed was in plastic. Coke was in plastic. Hmm. Uh, I went in. Here's the crazy thing. So I had been to Cozumel a few times, obviously. Mm -hmm. Go down to the end of the island. There were some private bars there. Uh, I wanted to take my, my wife for the day yep. because she had to put up with uh, all of my shenanigans. Well, she's cruise. not. She doesn't do well on boats or planes. She has like extreme vertigo when she gets on any kind of sea like that. Right? Yeah. Uh, but let alone, I cut my hair off, or so I invited somebody to cut my hair off on stage. Yeah. So we had that that whole ordeal. Um, go down to this private bar on the island. Uh, park park the vehicle, obviously. And uh, there's a, a little shop out front with some trinkets, like a shark tooth necklace. Uh, you know, there was an expat that was there. I think you bought your kid a guitar. I did. But it's the, like a guitar with rubber bands. From Coco, basically. like the, the animated movie Coco. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's, it's very. I don't have children. Very and family I keep, friendly. Won the Oscar, Dan. Back the in the Oscar. day, I kept showing up to uh, children's movies alone. Mm -hmm. And you got thrown out. Yeah. Yep. Got arrested so, four times for that. I just like, I get. I do mushrooms and then go. Yeah. Because they're fucking funny. And, you know. Hop on into Coco. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so I, I get there and <clears throat> I'm trying to get this little guitar for my kid and yep. something else before I get too fucked up. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Don't drink and drive. We're in Mexico. You have to. So you don't have, you don't have a choice. But there are no laws there. down no, there. No, there's no fucking laws. It's exactly like White Claw down there. The whole country is White Claw. Uh, it was t it's totally fucking Mexico. Get the guitar. And the girl who sells me my child's guitar was like, 
do you want any Coke? And I'm like, motherfucker, that is the second time that I've been asked that. And I'm also buying a guitar from my child. Yeah. Where is that cocaine? And <laughs> she pointed to the corner, eight rails chopped up evenly on a thing. And she was like, look, you can test it before you buy it. Um, so you can just go ahead and help yourself. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. No. I'm not going to trust that. No. Because um, you just made my guitar. I don't know where this came from or what. What I'm getting into, so we're gonna hit the bar. Yep. Go to the bar with with Malades, obviously, um, and then I went hard on the yards, dude. The yard beer, oh, yards yeah. Of beer, yeah. Um, but with tequila, <laughs> it was uh, it was margaritas, but you get the extra shot of tequila, right? And then they take that rubber hammer uh, and give you a snooter, and then bang that on your head. Yeah, I wouldn't like shake that. it around. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, took uh, four of those just to do it. Yeah. Um, so enjoy the shit out of that day. And then that live show after that was out of control. It was good. Yeah, it was really good. Saturday night. And then Sunday. So Jared schedules this after action report, right? Yeah. With Parker, our cruise contact. Parker's great. Parker's a great dude. Responsible. Very helpful. Friendly. Um, uh, Travis and Masaki, I think her name is. Eh, we're, we're we can call her cool. Wasabi. Um, they were super <clears throat> cool. And then uh, the photographer was super cool as well. So we had a good crew there. At any rate... <clears throat> The meeting is at noon. We all show up sitting there. No, Jared. No, not even close. Um, we, we just assume he's passed out in his room. He, uh, I'll, put, I'll put it this way. He's not on the show tonight because he may still be drunk on the ship. It's possible, yeah. Yeah. We haven't located him yet. No. Uh, no, we did. So <laughs> He'll be back tomorrow. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We thought, uh, we just assumed like he's probably just leaving. It's no big deal. Um, so we do our meeting, go out. Uh, me, Matt, and Noel are getting sushi. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, uh, his his girlfriend or whomever she is. I don't um, know. I, look, they call her White Claw Princess is all I know. Mermaid. Mermaid, whatever. Uh, yeah. At this point, I have seen her a total of 20 minutes on the cruise. Yeah. Because she wakes up at 9, blacks out by 10.30 a.m. Yes. And then usually yeah. a drinking bro carried her back to the room. Yep. Uh, and then she in had informed us at sushi in front of all of our wives that Jared had pissed all over her twice in the middle of the night, including her face. Yeah. And yeah. she was not mad about it. No, she didn't seem to mind, I guess. Uh, so, you know, what are you going to do? We find out that, no, Jared wasn't sleeping. He had woken up early. So yep. this is, he's a superhero, this guy. He really is. It doesn't matter how late he stays up drinking or how much he drinks. He wakes up at 7. Yep. So he, just like any other day, he woke up at 7. He's like, well, there's nothing to do yet. I'm going to go get fucking hammered. And he did at, and, and he was still at the pool when and, we were at our meeting. Exactly. Uh, so we, ha we, we have a, a gig to do, um, and he's behind a piano playing 80s music, full Busey. Yeah, we walk into the... Trash. He's so fucking drunk. We walk into the, uh, to the uh, studio there, and he's just like, surprise! Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, dude. Uh, go to Drinking Bros Instagram. Uh, that Wonderwall joke at the beginning was not... A joke at no, all. No, it's not a joke. No. He was actually at the end of it playing Wonderwall for everyone. Does not remember one word of it, doing it, no, video of no, it, no. nothing. We texted it to him. He's like, oh, shit, did I play Wonderwall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at no one's request, by the way. No, he like he was so drunk that I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. Like, it was a comical. It was like, uh, what's, what's the guy's name in the old fucking movies back Belushi. in the day? It, yeah. He went full yeah, Belushi. Yeah, full Belushi, He yeah. was full John Belushi. But he said that cruise. day one. Yeah. Like, he, he didn't do anything with his hair the whole time on the cruise because he's like, I'm just going full Belushi this weekend. Yeah. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. Yeah. We all knew what to expect. No one was surprised by anything that happened. No, not at all. It was, it, uh, it was it awesome. Was, it was fucking funny as Dude, shit. It was uh, probably one of the greatest experiences ever. Like, that cruise was yeah, fucking it was, amazing. It was great. Believe the hype, man. Things got wild. It was wild as shit. Next year, we'll we're going to protect gonna... some names and, yeah, and people. Some of them. Uh, uh, not look, there's them. nothing we can do about the strip club episode, obviously. So whatever no, happened out there, there no. happened. And wh whoever uh, got outed in that one, uh, th we couldn't do anything about it. It is what it is, man. Look, we're going uh, We're going to leave from Miami next year. Yes. So all you East Coasters, get your shit ready. Uh, we're going to we're gonna go down to the Bahamas and then go to a private island for a day. And the it's Bahamas gonna... still there? Uh, the rich parts, yeah. Okay, good. They've good. already been rebuilt. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sure, that. They have. Um, sure they have. <clears throat> what we're going to do next year, this is according to uh, Parker, our cruise guy. The ship will only be traveling at night, so during the day we'll be in dock. Okay. In a different spot in the Bahamas each day. And then do night shows at night? And then we'll do shows at night. Oh, yeah. it'll be a blast. So 
Fucking blast. You can go fuck around on the islands and do whatever you want. You can stay on the cruise and get in the pool all day, do whatever the fuck you want, take a nap in the afternoon, come out to the show at night. Yeah. We're going to do... Uh, we're working on a bunch of stuff. I don't want to give anything away yet. For we're, sure. We're, we're, we're working on some premieres. Yeah, that yeah, are yeah. going to be on the boat. And, and it was, uh, again, amazing across the board. Can't, I literally can't wait for the next one. Um, that'll be fucking rad. And then, you know, caught a flight back because I had to be at a school board meeting Yeah. Um, last Tuesday, night. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> man, was I on. I, the, the anger that I felt last night was beyond like putting somebody through a fucking drywall. It was beyond a Kyle. I'll put it to you that way. It was beyond a, 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 like two cans of monster and a drywall. We're talking David Banner type levels where I like, there was a, a friend of my wife's at this school board meeting. She was like, I think you might be turning green right yeah, now. Yeah, going yeah. full fucking Hulk uh, inside this place. So what happened was I'm wearing, I'm wearing these shirts. So if you're watching the video show on YouTube, uh, my wife and all of her friends in the neighborhood I made this shirt, uh, Mason, Mason Burrow Forest, uh, for neighborhood schools, right? That's our, that's our neighborhood. I know a lot of people will be like, hey, how, why would you give your fucking neighborhood away? A bunch of cops live there. That's like the safest neighborhood of all time. Yeah. Love it. L- love the neighborhood. All the cops are great. Uh, also, we, I patrol that neighborhood. And yeah. You, you really don't want to run into me at night. We love the police, man. So, and, and they live there. One of them uh, you know, is outside the school. Wilmington PD is fantastic. Um, that being said, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is uh, they're redistricting the school system here, um, which is a real big fucking problem for me. Well, look, I mean, sometimes redistricting happens. but It does. The, the way they're doing it doesn't make any fucking... Like, you have to drive past the school that your kid goes to now yes. to take them to a school that's like 20 minutes beyond o- that. On right? the same street. Yeah. And, and it's a one... Like, Wilmington's a very small town. Yeah, yeah. It's a one, it's a one lane street. I have to drive past the school that I'm currently taking my children to to go to another school for this. Um, it's busy and it's traffic. Ad, and look... Like an hour to an hour 15 to your day every single day. Uh, yes. And, and it's... Uh, you know, there's cops out in front... Yeah. Obviously, for, for children's safety and all that stuff, like I would have to wait in two lines of traffic or try to go out onto the main road, which there is no traffic lights outside that neighborhood, to get in or out. Um, and then that's a fuck all of traffic as well. Either way, that's going to add an hour, hour and 30 to the day. Oh, yeah. um, we were saving all of this, you know, hurrah for the, the, the big meeting, right? They said we could uh, <clears throat> get up and speak. We're going to have our moment in the sun. And the reason why I'm bringing this up today is we've actually gotten a shit ton of emails about redistricting and, and things that happen along this nature. First of all, it's all we'll just, we'll just let you know everything that went down. It's all rigged, right? With the school board, usually you know, some kids, are, their parents are on the school board. They'll keep their neighborhoods. They redistrict uh, along those lines. This one's rigged because they're, they're actually all up. The board is all up for re-election next year. The school board in Wilmington, so they, ha- they hired outs side of wilmington north carolina right yeah that's a typical politics move like if you it's it's a diffusion of responsibility right yes so i don't want to take the brunt of the heat like hey it wasn't me it was this this this, this company that's a fucking specialist mm-hmm. recommended it like no so there was a guy i'm gonna read off his name here um because here's the meeting started we were promised that we would get to speak in this auditorium and everything else and uh they showed this powerpoint presentation that was in you know shitty graphics and everything. If you go to croppergis.com, you could see how shitty the fucking graphics are. That's exactly what was on the screen. I mean, it looked like it was made by you know, a child. Maybe my child. I, I don't know. If he gets to stay at this school, maybe he'll get to make this website yeah, one day. next time, yeah. Um, but a guy gets up. His name is David L. Wartman. And he gets up in front of everybody and says, Hey, guys. Uh, doesn't introduce himself, by the way. I'm saying his name because he won't say his name. Say it again. David L. Wartman. And, uh, Spell that last name. Uh, W-O-R-T-M-A-N. Uh, that is David L. Wartman. And he gets up and says, hey, guys, uh, so we hired this outside company. They've never been here. <laughs> They've never lived here. And we did this to remain unbiased. And I was like, motherfucker, you have no idea any street, any neighborhood, any traffic pattern, anything mm-hmm. that we go through <laughs> in this whole goddamn thing, why would you hire an outside firm? Oh, that's right. You're up for, for re-election next year. Purposely doesn't say his name. 
because all of the parents are getting immediately pissed off. Finally, one like angry lady in the back just screams out at the end of his, his brief speech. Say your name. What's your name? <laughs> and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did I not say it? Uh, David, it's David Wardman. Dave Wardman. Like David Wardman. I'll be in the other David room and David we can Wardman. all fucking jack each other off or whatever after this meeting. Then Matthew Cropper gets up from, from GIS. Um, Wait, David Wartman, who is this guy? Uh, he's a school board guy? Yeah, he's the school board guy. He's the, he, he was the one school board guy that chose to, to speak. Uh, there was another dude there named uh, Nelson Bolu. Um, good luck on the last name of that fucking, that spelling on the last name of that one. Either or, after the presentation, they say, hey guys, so we're actually going to take you to another room. We've got some maps pasted up on the wall, and we're going to look, we'll let you look at the redistricting. We've got different options for each neighborhood, and then, uh, you know, we're going to make our decision in like three weeks or whatever it's going to be, right? Mm-hmm. And then they were like, if, if you find somebody with a yellow lantern, you can talk to them about your concerns and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. I go into this room. Um, it's in a, like a middle school gym is what it kind of looked like. Right. The map was so small, it might as well have been in Braille. Um, if you, you, you could just see parents like pushing in on their iPhones to try to find their streets again, all of it on purpose. It, you, it, it was either the map of Wilmington, North Carolina or Madagascar. Uh, <laughs> don't know which one, but, uh, there was three colors. It's basically the same place. Yeah. It's, it, it might as well have been right. Yeah. So you're there. I immediately bolt over to, uh, Matthew Cropper. Um, who runs... This is the turd from the GIS. From yes. Cropper GIS. Uh, 614-451-1242. Um, and, uh, and by the way, I'm giving out his number because he, he said it was fine when I talked to him. He said, uh, look, we, we uh, encourage your feedback. That's why you're here today. And I said, well, that's not true or else you, you would have let us speak last night. Uh, we get to the map. We don't have another option. So they had just relocated our neighborhood. Right. Um, and said, you don't have any other options. Sorry, that's it. Uh, and if you have any other thoughts and or suggestions um you can fill out a survey online survey was about five questions um, i immediately went out to the news crew outside and did copious amounts of interviews obviously of course yeah um you can read those online or find those i was on fire needless to say but uh my wife and you know all the, the women in the neighborhood had made these t-shirts and everything and they were just trying to silence any voices that were potentially pissed or whatever. Right, yeah, um, of course. I ran into, like, because there was 14 people you could have talked to, right? I ran into one of them who I actually knew on, a, like, a friendship level, and I was like, hey, bro, you don't work for the school board, do you? You're not supposed to be here. And he goes, no, man, they fucking made me be here. And I was like, so do we need to talk to him? He's like, there's only three people that have anything to do with this. Um, so I talked to fucking Matthew Cropper, GIS. GIS, uh, by the way, stands for Geospatial Intelligence. Does it? So it's like... Uh, <sighs> Using maps and, and cartography to make humans smarter. No. Okay. Ge- <laughs> okay. Geospatial intelligence is, is something that the intelligence community does. And the purpose of it is to uh, give people a broader understanding of what's going on at a certain place in a certain time. Mm. And you look at patterns and trends and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Look, <clears throat> the idea of geospatial intelligence for something like this makes sense for sure. But there's no way that a fucking local school board could afford what it takes to actually do an assessment of traffic patterns. There's no fucking way. No, none at all. Absolutely not. All they did was hire this guy to come be uh, a fucking talking head. That's, That's it. it. That's it. And so I, I, I confronted him, and, and uh, things got pretty heated. Um, and I said, look, man, you were promised that we would have options, all this other stuff. Uh, my biggest issue with it is this, right? I moved to Wilmington to get out of L.A., the school, the schools in the public schools in LA are shitty, right? Yeah. I want, I went to a public school. I wanted my kids to go to a public school. I'm not putting them behind fucking bars or gates. I don't live in a goddamn gated neighborhood. Um, all the shit we talk on the show, yeah, we actually preach. Like I, I don't, I, I don't live in a fucking gated community or any of that shit because I don't want to. No, I don't want to feel isolated from human life. I don't want my kids to go to private schools and stare at fucking tablets all day, like. I just don't want that. I want them to go on the bus. I want them to have real experiences. I wanted them to do that. I um, also wanted my parents to be there with my children. So they had just moved here as well. 
we had asked the realtor specifically, hey man, <clears throat> I realize redistricting happens. It happened to me as a child. And it of sucks. Course, yeah, yeah. I sucked. I, you know, I was in Atlanta uh, in, in the 80s when, you know, job boom happened. Mm -hmm. Fucking all these people moved in here. Wilmington is booming right now as well. Uh, and, and I got redistricted, and it was the same thing. I had to drive past my school to get to the other. Dude, I sat on the bus for like 45 minutes each way. It's, it sucked. I fucking hated it. Yeah, it ruins your whole fucking life. Yes. And, and all the friends that you had made yeah. are now separated the following year. So, like, I didn't see them. This happened in fourth grade in Atlanta. I didn't see them again until high school. Ninth grade, mm -hmm. it was weird, man. Where I was just like, "Oh, yeah. some of those friendships you grow out of." Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the girls get hotter. Some, you know, whatever, man. It was a weird fucking scene. We all ended up having to go to high school. So together. the girls from fourth grade got hotter in, in ninth grade. Is what you're saying? Well, some of them, like, because look, you always have your crushes in like fourth oh, yeah, grade yeah. and all that stuff, right? And you're like, oh, I wonder what they're gonna. Turn I never out really to be. paid a lot of attention to how things progressed over time. I guess some people, for me, it was more people just kind of sorted themselves into click categories. Yeah. Like there's there was a girl at my school that was like fucking knockout back then and in high school she was still a knockout but she kind of hung out with a bunch of fucking dum dums mm -hmm. so it's like ugh yeah ruined it ruined it fucking ruined it anyways these people are all clowns clowns and and so you know I talked to Matthew Cropper uh, from Cropper GIS what's his phone number six one four four five one one two four two if you want to call him and say free Mason Burrow Forest. That would be great. You can leave a message. He encouraged it when I talked to him. Uh, I said to him this, man. My biggest issue with everything that's going on is you don't live here. You don't know any of these traffic patterns that, that, that go on. You didn't sit on a bus, which I think is important. If you're going to do this, sit on a bus with the actual kids themselves. Yeah. Drive to these schools and see what it's like for them as well, along with the parents. Because, look, I've got two kids at two different ages right now. Um, Again, when I, when I asked my realtor to find me a neighborhood that would not be redistricted, he said, look, out of the, if you go out the back of your neighborhood, you were 1.6 miles to your elementary school, and you're 1.8 miles to your middle school. Yeah. And that's it. There's like, there's, that's as close as you can get to those two schools. Uh, there's, there's only like two or three high schools here, so you're, you're right. kind of stuck there or whatever. And he goes, there's no way you can possibly be redistricted because the schools are so close to your house. Again, 1.6 if you take a left to go to the elementary school. 1.8 if you take a right to go to the middle school. And I was like, great, man. Uh, went into the neighborhood, made sure there was a bunch of kids there. I think it was about 34 kids there that go yeah. to school with my child. Um, family friendly. Everybody waves at each other. It's, it is polite. It's, it's the best neighborhood I've ever lived in, adult or child, in my entire life. And then this fucking bombshell gets dropped on me. My kids have already started school, yeah. right? And now I'm going to have to pull them out and go to another school and drive them past that, or they're going to have to sit on a bus for an extra 45 minutes. Um, and again, they gave us no options whatsoever of like, hey, man, we, we could do this or this or this right. or this. Uh, they keep trying to pass the buck. That's why I'm talking about it here, where it's just like, look, man, um, I need a little help from the drinking bros. That's right. it. Just one free phone call. Uh, you can call Cropper GIS. Matthew Cropper uh, is his name. It's 614-451-1242. And say, free Mason Borough Forest, uh, which is my neighborhood. And just say, look, man, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? And how could you? I, because the thing is this, man. I know my wife and, like, all the other moms worked hard on all of this, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they didn't even give them a time to speak. Time to speak. Yeah. Uh, they didn't take the, the, the petitions, the, the other things yeah. or whatever. Um, and I could see, because this happened to me in middle school. I lived in Florida for a year. I could see if you were redistricting to maybe reappropriate or, or include more races, right? Yeah, yeah, if you were trying to, uh, you know, desegregate the schools or whatever. That's, yeah. not, that's not the case at all. Um, no, it's, it's just about... Actually, you know, honestly, I don't know what the fuck it's about. I don't either. Um, there's, there, look, there's a bunch of rumors going around that, because uh, we've only, again, Wilmington is a small town, quarter million people, I think, somewhere yeah. in there. Um, there's one gigantic hospital here, and there's a rumor that the hospital is for sale for a billion dollars to like uh, a Novart or one of those places. Yeah, yeah. One of the big conglomerates, yeah. Yeah, because a bunch of these conglomerates are going into 
cities buying up hospitals. Oh yeah. And then it's it is By the way, if you're wondering why your insurance costs are so high, it's because of that and because of the big pharmaceutical industry. Correct. So, so what the city wants to do mm-hmm. is take that money and then build the schools off of that money, right? Right. Um and that's the rumor that's going around of why they just don't build another school that's that's closer or open up more schools or whatever it is because it's you know, in our area, it's not like they opened up other schools, they're just pushing kids around to different Do you know schools. how many kids in total are enrolled at the elementary school? Uh, well, I, I know the difference was this. I know the difference was about 128 uh, total. So 25% of those are in your neighborhood. So 25% of that difference is coming from one neighborhood. Correct. Like, get fucked. And, 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 what they, and it's like they're sending 25% of the fucking redistricting across the school to get to another school. That doesn't make any fucking sense. At all. Each school is still going to be overcrowded and, you know, they'll have a trailer or whatever reason again the reason i'm fucking so goddamn pissed off about it is like dude we have moved i moved my entire life from los angeles here specifically to get to this neighborhood uh because it was just the schools were closer to my children and that was it um my parents just moved here because uh look drinking bros keeps growing we keep doing bigger and bigger events live yep. shows guests all around the country and we're like look man we'd love to see the grandkids more spend some time and help you out on the back end of this so they literally just bought a house here fucking 12 days ago um and now i'm like I, what the fuck do i tell them like hey man sorry you know that school you occasionally take them to? They're gonna, you're going to have to hike it on down the road, yeah. past that school to go <laughs> to another school. And I would be, look, I, I also probably would have been fine with this if, if there was some other options on the table or they, they just would have let everyone speak. Because there was a lot of angry, a lot of like two, 300 angry parents yeah. in one room. Let them all have a chance to speak um, in public, in a public forum. Don't take people to a fucking back room and tell them to get with somebody with a yellow necklace and, and do a song and fucking dance and present things um, because you can't do anything. And you know that, right? Yeah. Like, what's the term for that? They're, they're trying to destabilize them or what, you know? Def- no, they're trying diffuse to diffuse the a, situation. It's a diffusion uh, yeah. of, of responsibility from their, their sake. So here's what uh, we can do, I guess. Um, if this behavior continues from the school board. Mm-hmm. It, it, it gets real simple. So I've worked in politics before. I know how all this works. And it's a digital age, and I've done a little bit of digital marketing in my day. <laughs> so if they keep messing around and doing stupid stuff like this, and you'll notice I'm not swearing because we're going to put this out publicly, uh, I'm going to spend a lot of my time, effort, resources, and uh, capabilities making sure that none of these people ever get elected to that school board again. Yeah, I, look, and I have all their names. Um you know, there's there's about five of them, and they're all up for reelection next year. So, uh, I, I I told you, I called you last night, yeah, because I had just gotten back from it, and I, and I was fucking exhausted after doing you know live shows and flying across the country and all that yeah. other shit. Plus, we did you know Texas LSU and the Cowboys game. Yep, we did live shows from from there as well. We were gone for about eleven days, and then to go into this and then not have a chance to speak because that's that's why I flew back in the first place. Um, I was elected from our neighborhood to speak, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, to not get to do any of that shit, yeah, fucking a, bro. I mean, it is goddamn brutal. And I, I talked to Matthew Cropper at Cropper GIS at six one four four five one one two four two Freemasonboro Forest, um, and I said, look, man, I think you might be making a mistake with this, and you probably should have let people speak, and maybe you should have another meeting. And he's like, no, uh, that doesn't work, and he, you know it tried to make us some excuse of why it didn't. Um, and I was like, you just don't want people to speak out publicly is what it is. Right. And so I said to him, I was like, well, if you don't let me speak here, uh, we have an audience of 6.1 million and I could speak there if, if, if you'd feel more comfortable with that. Yeah. And he looked at me and he just goes like, like, you know, kind of like winced and he goes, yeah. Uh, you know, we welcome, uh, you know, feedback, um, right. through, through the phone and all that stuff. I was like, great. Cause I'll, I'll just call the office. We, we can call the office. That's fine. I just want, you know, a conversation, um, one-on-one without, you know, 200 parents around just screaming, trying to, you know, say why the, their, their kids shouldn't be separated. Cause there's kids that are, you know, look at an elementary school, there's kids that are in kindergarten and then they have older brothers that are in third grade. Oh, yeah, like yeah. My kids are separated by four years. Yep. What are you going to just pull them out of there? Yeah. Um, 
Now, now, like when uh, when your oldest is in high school and your youngest is in the elementary school, are they going to be going to different schools? Because fuck, man, it'd be awful. So what? What? I, here's what I'm going to do for real. If this doesn't get changed, I, I'm going to run. Actually, I'm going to run for for the board. And uh, look again, it's a small town. Uh, we have a lot of friends here. We know pretty much everyone in this goddamn city. Yeah, I'll just run for your fucking job. So. Uh, if something doesn't happen, you don't let these women come up on stage and speak. Um, I will run for your fucking job, David Wharton, uh, and I will take it from you next year. Uh, Nelson, uh, I will run for your fucking job. That's Nelson B- Ballou. Yeah, I will take it next That's year. That's B-E-A-U-L-I-U, by the way. And, and chances are it'll be, what, two or three social media posts? Yeah, I'll um, do it. Lisa Estep, E-S-T-E-P. Yeah. Stephanie Adams, it's Stephanie with a... B H S no, it's S T E F A N F and F. Just a stupid way to spell your name. Judy Justice, Judy Jeanette S Nichols and Bill Rivenbark R I V E N B A R K and they're all uh, their emails are first name dot last name at n h c s dot net. If you're you know yeah. feeling if you like if you, you feel inclined again, it's free. I don't know what you're saying to yourself, Ross. You bitch a lot about a lot of shit from, from time to time. And uh, only when it's unfair to the world, like, you know, I, I guess to people that have worked hard. Because it, it, it just keeps happening over and over and over again yeah. um, to people. And it's like, man, again, like the Drinking Bros, man. Fuck. Like, thank you for my service. Yeah, the, the Drinking Bros worked really hard to make sure that was the number one book in the world. And it was. And it was. And then we didn't get recognized for it. Yeah, for, for, for yeah. the New York Times bestseller. So like, we're actually going to go talk to somebody about that on Friday. We are. And if that interview goes down, I can promise you it'll be the end all be all. Yeah, your dick. You've and, all been waiting for. Your dick and balls are going to fall off. Yeah, you've all been waiting for. But, uh, uh, and truthfully, like, you know, whatever neighborhoods you live in or whoever is, is getting moved or whatever, like, uh, all of these women. Because it was look, it was a lot of moms there, uh, very few dads. But I'm yeah, a yeah. I'm a pretty hands on dad. I I a lot, for as arrogant as I seem on air, I love my children and uh, they're the best. Like I, I don't have bad kids and they're great. And um, so for them and for uh, for all the moms that came out and uh, who didn't get to speak and all that stuff, hopefully this helps. Um, and uh, and Matthew Cropper at Cropper GIS at six one four four one five one two Four two, will finally hear your voices. Uh, and again, that's free Mason Burrow Forest, dude. Um, but yeah, that so that was that was the Tuesday night that I walked into, and again, exhausted, all of that shit. And yeah. we get a phone call today about a guest that we've been trying to get for five five hundred episodes. Um, we yeah. think we <laughs> think we got him. We're gonna we're gonna hop on another flight. Mm. On Thursday, <laughs> not gonna say where we're going. That'll give it away. So yeah. we, we can't say where we're going. We're gonna hop on another flight Thursday it's morning. Abu which, Dhabi. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're gonna. Uh, it's, it's General Mattis. <laughs> it's Nermal from the Garfield series. Because that's where he would always send Nermal, and that's I've always wanted to talk to that cat. Nermal, by the way, genderless, no gender. Yeah. So very 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're uh, we're we're headed out there, and um, if it goes down, just know I don't know that we would ever be able to top it. Uh, we might have to just blow our brains out on air. And yeah, we may it do day. it. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'm not even making a suicide joke. I just uh, no. It's just like you, it. It would be you... so crazy that I I honestly I can't wrap my mind around it. I, I, I literally can't. Like my my head would explode. If this actually takes place on Friday. Yeah. Um, but with the, the flights are booked. We have a call time. So we will see. Uh, but we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Sleep in comfort. Ghostbed, I have missed you. I was gone for 11 days, D'Anthony, D'Anthony and I. It was I. rough, yeah. Without, a, without the ghost bed, man, you don't realize it until you're gone. I did not sleep well the entire time we were gone. The... Uh, the drinking bros, when they got back, everybody was posting pictures of their ghost beds being like, hey, man, I, I know. missed you. That was funny. <laughs> it was really funny. It's the truth, man. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. W- they got you covered, man. Uh, literally and figuratively. Because uh, they got bed sheets. They'll cover you up real snug. Uh, they got pillows, mattresses, you name it. Uh, and if you're military or first responder, 
you get an extra 15% off. If you're a regular human like myself, you get $200 off uh, the, the Ghost Lux mattress, free pillows. As always, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You get 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. No one is doing that except for ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Who else we got up next? Raycon. Buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Headphones, best in the biz, man. Uh, these are wireless. We got, dude, I've, I, th- I feel like I just, they were in full time for like 11 days. Yeah. Um, yeah, the whole time. They're the best. Uh, wireless, uh, fucking cheapest shit, dude. 70 bucks with, with the, uh, that URL I gave you. Uh, buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros. You get 20% off, and uh, these things are great, dude. Um, they last for, look, if you put them in the, the little re- rechargeable box, last for five hours, you can run a fucking marathon if you want. Uh, love, love these headphones from buyraycon.com forward slash drink it bros. And they fucking work for everything. Uh, last but not least, D'Anthony dollar shave club. Yeah. Dot com forward slash drink it bros. Right. I love those guys. It's it. They're slash drink it bros now. Right. I, I feel th- like they're in. I think so. Let me, uh, let me check. I feel like they're in dude. Let me check. I've got, I feel I've like got it's some, dollarshaveclub.com forward slash drink bros. I feel like right they gave here. that to us. I mean, they should have if they had that yet. moniker, right? Um, well, look, we are the drinking bros, so that makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, yeah, look. Do- yeah, that's right. Dollarshaveclub.com forward slash, slash drinking bros. bros. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I fucking knew it, dude. Either way, uh, if, you, if you're subscribing on YouTube, uh, look, at the, look at the lather. Can we cut to, to uh, Dan's? Talking about this one? Yeah. Jamie, can we cut to dance desk? Yeah, look at that. Look at the fucking shave lather they have. Dude, they've yeah. stepped up their game. Their products are amazing. They're saying, hey, dude, we're fucking back, and we're better than ever. Uh, look, if you type in the promo code Drinking Bros at, at, at checkout, you can get a, a little kit that's got everything, a sampler, so you can try all their shit. They want to tell you, hey, man, we are, we are trying to be the top shaving company in the biz. Try us out. Go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. And uh, get fucking wet with their products, dude. It's it's the shit. I used that hair fiber on the cruise, my man. Yeah, you did. You came in uh, came in hot with Summer Swayze. The day that you got your hair cut off, you had it slicked back like uh, like a young Steven Seagal, slightly fatter Steven Seagal. Yeah, slightly fatter. What? Wait, what? When he was younger? Oh, he was fatter. No, you were. No, he's fat now. No, I'm I, I'm I am bright as rain. <laughs> The best shape of my goddamn life here. Um, I am. This is it right here. A plus number one all the way around. A plus number one. Yeah. yeah. No, it's. Yeah, you definitely look like Seagal, Seagal though. Like straight up, you look like Seagal. Yeah, yeah, with the ponytail. Yeah. I had a fully slicked back <laughs> ponytail for the summer of Swayze. I was unaware how long it was. It was a two hander. Yeah. It was a two handed pony on the And back we had, uh, what's her name? Nicole House? 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 Uh, Haas. Yeah, it's a, a German name, I believe. Yeah. Um, Not her name, because that's her husband's name. He's an infantry guy, by the way. Oh, is he? Yeah, but she... Uh, so we just invited... I, I think it was their anniversary or something, and we just so, invited oh, them I, on It was stage. her birthday. Yeah, it was her birthday. Yeah, yeah. Invited her on stage. Uh, she cut the summer Swayze off, so yep. that is... It's done. But I appreciate you wearing the shirt today, because you said, hey, man. Yeah. I'm going to give you one more. It's the last one. Yeah. I'm burning this shirt after. It's a great shirt. I'm it not going to burn it. Actually, I get compliments on this shirt. Everywhere people don't People don't know that it's an inside joke with us. They're just like, oh, Patrick Swayze, dope. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're in the know, they're in the know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the shirt is, is fucking dope. Um, by the way, shirts, we get drinkingbros.com. We get shirts on drinkingbros.com. We made them like 19.99, so everybody can just buy a shirt. I don't think yeah. we even make any money off that shit. Yeah, we're gonna. We have a bunch of new designs coming out soon. Right now, you can buy the logo designs, though. Yeah. Next time you show up to those Drinking Bros meetings, make sure you uh, make sure you grab one of those so people know who you are. Oh yeah. That way, when the police show up, they're like, "Oh, you guys burned down the place." Oh, they're, uh, they're drinking, drinking bros. bros. That's fine. You're drinking bros. Got it. Uh, I mean, I couldn't sleep last night, man. Um, the 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 rock and rolling was like I'm still a little. Oh, you're talking about the last night on the boat? Uh, no. Oh, like last at home, night. yeah. Oh. I'm still a little shaky back and forth. I ended up staying up watching uh, that Lewandowski shit. Oh, I watched it all night. We'll talk about this on the fake news tomorrow, but man, he well, Potentially, uh, if, we, if we do it, it just it depends on what time that flight is, obviously. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but I think so. But either, either way, that was the craziest troll of all time. He <laughs> Very composed. Yes. 
And it, it, look, it can be hard to do something. Like if you ever tried to perform when everyone's watching you, everybody's hanging on every word you say, mm-hmm. that can be challenging. Because you don't want to fuck Very much up. so. He did not fuck up once all night. Or all day. It was five and a half hours. Do you know I, what an elaborate troll you have to be to maintain that level for a full Congress hearing? Well, look, he, got, he helped Trump, who is the biggest troll, yeah. get elected president of the United States. So yeah. obviously this guy knows what he's doing. I, obviously. And cl- clearly I'm, I'm here for all of it. I think it's... Look, man, you know me. I'm apolitical. I don't care about that shit. You are. I love but Trump. I, I love... When crazy shit like this happens, it's my fucking favorite. It's the same. I don't even care what the outcome is. I just want to see it. Why, why? Let me ask you this, and this is a dead serious question. Why are they calling anybody before Congress anymore to do anything? I have no idea. It's because a fucking show. It, it's, a, it's a show, but it's a show not for the people that are actually, you know, I guess you would call them witnesses, so yeah. to speak. Um, not for them. It's for the fucking senators so they can uh, speak to the constituents. Yeah. So they each get five minutes. The right. first 345 of it is them talking about themselves and fucking gun control and some other bullshit cause that they're championing. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then right after that, they'll ask like a 30-second question and wonder why they're not getting the answer that they, they wanted. And it was just like, hey, man, I, I don't know what you just said no, for they're, it's, five minutes. They're basically, so if it was an actual court of law, there would be uh, a defense attorney mm-hmm. that would object because they're badgering every single fucking time they speak. Like you can't just... In a court of law, which is what the goddamn Congress is supposed to be, by the way, that's supposed to be a, a legal hearing. You're under oath. Mm-hmm. So the idea that the fucking prosecutor, which is essentially what the Congress person is, can yap, 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 and then when you start to answer, they cut you off and say, no, that's bullshit, no, this or no, that, and redirect and stuff like that and bring up irrelevant shit, and yet you can have your attorney behind you for counsel, mm-hmm. but you can't interject. Ah, uh, you, yeah, yeah. Like you man. can tell them to fuck off, but yeah. you can't. Like you can't. There's no legal precedent. There's no fucking. Uh, they they run by Robert's Rules of Order, so it's not a courtroom, right? Right. But it is a courtroom because it's you're under oath and you're being questioned by people with legal authority. Yes. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. So if it were me, I would have done the same goddamn thing. I, he had that piece of paper. Yeah. Next to him, that uh-huh. had from the White House, that was basically invoking executive privilege. They, the, the Congress people continued to say that executive privilege doesn't extend to Lewandowski. That is absolutely correct. But it does extend to the president and anything he may have said to people that were working directly for him. So I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I don't either, and I don't know what the point is. I mean, half of that should have been classified anyways. You're trotting out a fucking Shetland pony at this point um, on an American Airlines flight just to see if you can get away with it as a support animal. And it's like, hey, man, I I get it. Yes, legally you have the right to call anybody up. And they did with... That dickhead Robert Mueller, oh yeah, um, who who said absolutely nothing too. Yeah, all of these people say nothing on there. Um, nobody's going to go up there and just be like, oh, I'm going to wa- sing for you." I really want to know how much. So here's what I think: something like 44 separate votes were taken to abolish Obamacare by the Republicans mm-hmm. um, when they had the House, but not the Senate and not the presidency. Right. So it, it was never going to work. Sure. Ever. Um, I feel like we, as the people of this country, should be able to look at something like that, whether it's Republican or Democrat, and say, look, you're wasting my fucking money. You're done. Like, you get a budget. Yeah. And you can spend X amount of it on this and this and this. You don't get a fucking separate budget because your political feelings are hurt and you feel like you're going to go grandstand for a while. They're spending millions of dollars. Yeah, and, and look, the celebrities online, man, if you, if you read Twitter and all that other shit, like, I mean, people were crying. They were like, impeach him. Get him out of there. Can't stand this. This is crazy. It's like, w- 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 this happens every single time. Oh, yeah. Was, what the fuck? Do, how is this different than any, anybody else on either party? Like, Republican or Democrat, you're getting nothing done by doing all of this shit. The only time I've ever seen it work, essentially, was when Jon Stewart got up there and fought for the yeah. uh, first responders from but even then, even then, the first responder, he was with that they died before they got the fucking bill signed yeah because uh, these dickheads so like dude what what's the what's the point of all of this um i don't get it I, I never will probably and like you know you just keep beating your head into the wall the only time i ever liked it but I, and i didn't think that they should have done it was when congress had the like uh, roger clemens up there was licking his lips for steroids yeah like 900 times and it was yeah. just like you were like whoa you could tell he hadn't had the juice in yeah. a couple days and I uh, was real thirsty for it, but uh, even he got off of that. 
So no one ever really got in any trouble. The only think. one who did was uh, Marion Jones, uh, and she ended up. She the, lost the sprinter. Her, she lost her medals and stuff, but she didn't do. She got a year. Time, right? she, oh, had she had a year, year in prison. Yeah. Um, and then that uh, uh, this is a separate story, but um, that Takashi Six Nine went up yesterday. In yeah, federal I saw court that, in New yeah. York. Uh, that motherfucker spilled on everyone, dude. Yeah. He was snitching on people that he'd, he'd never even met before. He's like, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> like, just relax, guy. Uh, yeah, he's still going to be in jail for the rest of his life, though. Yeah, I don't know how you get away. Like, is he, like, has... is he just trying to avoid the death penalty? Because, look, it, it's not going to happen. Is he in California? No, he's in, uh, he's in New York right now. So They're not going to give him the death penalty anyways. What I heard was this. If he, if he gave up on everyone, right, that they would, they would release him and put him in protective custody. Um, or the witness protection program. I'm oh yeah, sorry. he'll definitely blend in. Motherfucker's got face tattoos. Uh, he's, he's got a, a famous giant fucking rapper. Six nine. Are you fucking kidding me? Tattoo on his. They're face. gonna get him a new fucking face. Yeah. And uh, God damn it, dude. Th- th- so he's going to get out because he's snitched on every single person, and they don't know when or whatever. And that was the deal he made. Ten years from now, he's gonna be on a podcast. I don't think he'll be alive. Oh no! Somebody will get him. Somebody will get him. Yeah. Because um, he's facing forty-seven years right now, and if they get him out now, and it's all. I think the blood's in New York is what it is. It doesn't matter because Crip or blood or, or MS or fucking Latin Kings, anybody will fuck. That's a chip for them. Like, if you want to get in, if you want to yeah. get, if you wanna oh, get yeah. made, quote unquote, and you find that guy and clip him and you can prove it, yep. then you're in. You don't have to go through all the other bullshit. Somebody will get that guy for sure. So, I, and I think the other part of it is he's too famous where it's like, you know, once you get used to that fame, you're not yeah. going to just give it up and sit in a you know a one bedroom in in Arizona. Maybe they're going to send him to uh, Norway, like uh, Van Zant and that show he's on, Lilyhammer. Have you ever seen that? Oh yeah, he's yeah, like a yeah, mobster yeah. and he yeah. lives in fucking Lilyhammer. It's yeah. actually a really good show if you've never seen it. Is before. that possible? The U.S. won't put oh, somebody yeah, yeah. out of the country, will they? If they if they give them enough, like look, if um, there's something called deferred prosecution uh-huh. where. When he goes into a, a situation like that, he's like, look, you're guilty of this shit, and we can prove it. Right. Uh, we're going to defer prosecution so long as you cooperate, right? But that saves the government millions of dollars having to track down, like send police to investigate and all this other bullshit. Makes the trials for those next couple guys a lot easier. So probably, yeah. Like it saves them millions of dollars. They, they, what do they spend on OJ? $25 million, I think, prosecuting <sighs> that case? I, Ima- I know that they weren't imagine going if, back. Like know? he only killed two people. Imagine if they were like... 40 fucking murders that they had to prosecute and they just saved yeah. all that time doing it. Yeah, they probably will put him up somewhere decent, I guess. Yeah. It was wild, though, to see him just <laughs> point out people in court where you were just like, oh, man, they're right there. You were, yeah. you were making him point to the people individually just saying, hey, man, you're, that, Did, that's the guy. I you fucked me. I haven't seen he it. murdered was people. There, was there any, like, was anybody yelling or throwing shit at him or anything? No, were, but uh, uh, allegedly... There was a bunch of like fucking gang members mm-hmm. that were in there, and uh, you know, they're trying to they're trying somehow to get to him. Uh, apparently, there's a and you could speak more on this than I can. Um, there's a tunnel, like a, a, like a tunnel that goes underneath the from the jail in to some the federal court. courthouses. Yeah, fucking a, dude. Imagine that shit. Not all of them have it, and uh, you know, some of them have multiple. Means of, of uh, egress as well. So he like testified in his in his jail clothes, which I didn't. I thought they gave you like suits and shit. Uh, not if you're testifying. If you're if you're the defendant, they do. Okay. So he's not the defendant anymore. He's a state state's witness. Got it. Yeah, he was in his shit, man, and he had a uh, you know the, the rainbow hair. Still, oh, he's, they're still at least they're providing him with some paws. Yeah, to right. Put in his hair. What the fuck? So he dies. That's what he does every week. Dies eggs. That's what he does, and, and then it's, it, that was all tied air, up yeah. in his thing and. Uh, yeah, man, he went in on everybody, um, and a lot of people online were just like, "Look, I, there's no way you're gonna you're gonna give up that many people in today's society." No, and then just walk out of there cleanly. No, what I recommend doing, guys. By the way, if you're planning on murdering a bunch of people, mm-hmm. don't uh, record your, a video about it. Ah, put it on social media. Yeah, try try not to. Uh, try not dumb. To. That's dumb. That's great advice. Uh, also, don't murder anybody if you can help it. But if you're going to murder someone, probably don't put the evidence for it on the internet, which is forever, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, forever. Um, so now this is his second day, and this is breaking news. Now he's just going over the Barclays shooting uh, at the, uh, holy fucking shit. Um, look, he's, he's going, like, for exact people, 
saying who killed who. Those Barclays shooting was a big deal um, back in uh, April 2018. Yeah. Uh, so he just ratted them out right now. TMZ is updating it live. So they must have somebody in the courtroom, which is amazing to me. Uh, it's the nine Trey gang. Um, look, I'm, I'm not a member. Never pretended to be. But uh, if, you, if you go by the nine Trey gang, my, my guess is, is, is that you'll probably get killed at some point. Treyway. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. So you'll probably get killed at some point. Um, but yeah, man. This is crazy as fuck, dude. Because back in the day when shit went down like this, with like mobsters and shit. Yeah. You never hear anything. No, because there's no social media. There's yeah. no nothing. And it's, it's, you know, that's what you read in the papers. It's what you read in the old newsies. Yeah. Uh, Sammy the Bull Gravano is taken away. And that's that. Uh, but now, it, shit, TMZ's got play by play of it. They're pulling up old footage from the shooting to go along with the testimony. Yeah. God damn, dude. I, you can't get away with shit. You can't. These days. There's no point in doing that stuff. Look, if you're, if you really want to kill somebody. Yeah. Don't. Man, you keep telling me that. Just go to a foreign country. Look, look, you can literally go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, and you can pay a lot of money, 80, 85K. And government troops will take you out into the bush and you can hunt poachers. You can kill them. Or yeah. you can go on that cruise out of uh, Qatar that hunts Somali pirates. There's I'm a lot just, of things I, you could do. I'm just pissed. I never got a fucking murder, dude. I just I wanted one and I thought it was I thought it was still possible, but it really is not, man, at all. It's rough these yeah. days, yeah. For just I mean just, to do a real murder, you could kill people and get away with it easily. But to do it in a way that's gonna be satisfying to your murderous rage, right. not really. Right. It's too much science these days, Fuck too many man. cameras. Uh, I wanted it, and now I think it's over, man. I think my, I miss my, I miss my peak. I miss my window. I don't know. Forty percent of murders in this country go unsolved. Hmm? About forty percent of murders go unsolved. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. So you got, you know, I mean, look, you're a gambling, man. I am. I am. Forty percent though is not that. That's high. not great. No. I mean, maybe you can buy some points. I know. Buy half a point. <laughs> buy, just, buy, just buy half a murder point. Just let me get. Let me bump that up to uh, forty-five. Just give me a forty-five percent. No, half a point. That would take you up to eighty percent. Uh, no, I'm, I, look, you, 45 would be good for you. 45 would be good. 45% for I'm, not, I'm not greedy. Well, no, but you also want to go to jail and get butt fucked for the rest of your life. I don't, I would probably, look, we have a number. I think we discussed this on a previous show. How many dudes you'd fuck? No. How many years it would take for you to off yourself or actually do the time. I forget if we did it on this one or Ross Patterson revolution, but my number was, my number was 10. If it was over 10 years, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to jail. I mean, it depends on how old you are. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm look what twenty six. Um, no, nope. it's twenty eight, nope. twenty eight, somewhere in there. No, uh, very. I'm no, like, you were born in nineteen twenty eight. I'm, Maybe I'm that's... Uh, five or six summers younger than you, no, so whatever that tallies up to. You were a decade um, older than me. Again, not not really good with math, but uh, with that being said, I think 10, 10 is my number before I would ice myself. Yeah. Um, anything more than that? No, because it's like fuck, man. I don't know. I don't think so though, because it takes time for something like that to settle in. And then you get into a routine, you become institutionalized. I, that's why I think more people jail. Kill you them. think? Yeah, yeah, dude. That's why I think most most people don't kill themselves in jail because you become institutionalized so fast. Everything is so regimented there that you're just like, oh, like your fucking dumb reptile brain is just like, oh, this is what I do now. Well, think about this. Like you snore a lot, right? Uh, yeah, and I know this because we travel all the time together. When I'm sick, yeah, for sure. It's, and I it gets could loud. not sleep in a, the same room as you. We get separate rooms on the road. Yep. Um, if that was my cellmate. You can't really say shit or just kick the shit out of them. Like nobody's gonna ch swap you out for snoring. Uh, or imagine, imagine you're in there with a guy who's just got a, a an internal bowel system that just rips open like a fucking phone book every single morning, and that stink just slaps you right across the fucking beak every morning. And I, he's I hear two feet from your no. Your bed. I I hear what you're saying, but. Uh, and I'm, this is gross, but I'm not talking out of school here because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have been deployed that could say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you'll, I've jerked off in so many fucking Porta Johns that have like six days worth of shit in them from 800 different dudes. Oof. It's just like, I, I think you just fucking, you get used to whatever. Do you the really? Fucking, yeah. Oh, God. And now. I, uh, so, I have to shit my pants before I can come. So it's like getting, it's getting serious now. Yeah, it's getting right? real serious now. I had to go to see a doctor, and now it's back to normal now, but before, for a while. That, that's the real PTSD right there. I think I would be fine with 800 dudes, like not knowing who the 800 dudes are shitting in one place, rather than just one. If I had to smell one person's 
specific fucking stink. You mean like that doctor that's suing Antonio Brown right now? Yes. If I if I did to to get that one specific stink on me, like I think that would be that that would drive me over the edge. Right? Yeah, but would you kill him or yourself, right? That's the question. Where do like, you go where do you go from there and how many years? If you're in a non death penalty state, then honestly, instead of killing yourself, you just start killing other people because then you get put in isolated Yes. And then you're by yourself. If you're gonna live that out, but yeah. I wouldn't live that out. But if I if if somehow they had gotten a hold of me mm-hmm. and I had life in jail and there's I, I didn't have a chance to kill myself yet and I was in the cell or whatever. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, I'd kill the, the, the roommate. I don't even give a shit who he is or what he did. And then, what if it was Joel Osteen? Uh yeah. Yeah. Osteen? I mean I feel like I'd probably kill that guy just on the street somewhere. When he didn't open up the, the church for the hurricane yeah. victims, I was I, I was prayed to God and God said, Fuck those people. Yeah. Uh, there was some meme about that. Yeah. I, I was off the Osteen train at that point. Well, I've been off that train. I thought since. maybe he was helping people, dude. I thought there was a, a you chance. You know what he did? He sold twenty three million copies of a purpose driven life. He did. Twenty three you want to tell people in the audience how much money that netted him? Oof. Uh, if it's hardback, you're looking at probably ten bucks a copy. Uh, if it's paperback, you're looking at seven or eight. I, Let's say it's eight. That I mean, that number is astronomical. Mm-hmm. Look, if you're able to find a printer and ship it yourself, and yeah. not even have to go through Amazon, yep. it's a I think it's a dollar eighty-seven a hardback. Uh, the problem is you got to go through a publisher and Amazon and yeah. pay ninety people to do shit. If you're fucking Osteen, though, maybe he was doing that shit underneath the church. I doubt it. He probably made a hundred million dollars off of just that book. Probably, probably. Uh, that church he's got was massive. Yeah, tax exempt, by yeah, the way. All of it's like tax exempt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, look, maybe Osteen's doing it right, and we're the fucking assholes. No, he's the asshole. Yeah. Uh, let's try to get him on the show. Oh, man. If I, I saw just, that, I would dude like him person, to pray for you, Dan. On I, would, the show. I would punch a hole straight through his fucking chest if I, I saw him. I think him. he might be able to convert you. No, he's like five foot three, by he the way. He would probably pray for you and, and convert you and pray for you a lot. Mm. So, probably hold your hand, intertwine it. You got to intertwine it. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Edie Patterson, friend of the show, who's been on the show, yep. is on a great religious show right now, um, the, the Gemstones, The Righteous Gemstones on HBO. Fuck, it's good with uh, Danny McBride oh. and is it uh, good? John Goodman. I haven't seen it yet. It's great. Um, I'm behind a couple episodes. I can't is wait. Is it to season one? Yeah, season one. See, I'll wait until season one's over before. A lot I get of male it. nudity already, which I'm a big fan. Yeah, you of. giggle when you see dicks. That, that's if I could see dicks for 90 minutes in a film. Oh, speaking of that, we forgot. Ever. What was that? I can't remember the dude's name, but somebody on the cruise uh, had the largest Nuts testicles. sack of all time. Yeah, that guy who who pulled his sack up like that. Yeah, I yeah. got a photo with it um, from a yeah. professional photographer. So I'm going to post that. Yeah, I don't know how to blur out a sack that large. No, it was like he pulled his sack up over. His dick. It was bigger than a can of Kill Cliff. Yeah, it was big. Um, so it was it was like the biggest set of tests, and he's like a big nuts- guy. He's like six he's eight, guy. six nine, something like that. I big was guy. expecting a huge nutsack when he said, "I've got the biggest nutsack." Yeah. I was expecting a big nutsack, but yeah. not that. No, um, that was like some fucking apocalypto shit where you're hiding under that when the the, the rain comes in the rainforest. You know, where for example, like, oh. Matt is not into male nudity, despite having been a ranger, mm. uh, but. He, he chanced it. He turned away at first and like, dude, you got to see this. And he looked over and his face was just like, oh, shit. He was impressed. Like, that is a fucking giant nutsack. It's like a look, mighty, mighty nutsack. Sometimes it doesn't matter how weird or gross something is. If it's impressive, then it's impressive, right? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I stopped and took a couple peeks with, yeah. at it. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to Now your fa- away. Your face was six inches away from that thing. Easily. Because I, I wanted to see it up close. Part of me thought it was fake at first. If there's any crabs in there, they're probably in your fucking sideburns by now. Ah. Uh, they jump. He was a clean, they jump. He was a clean man. Oh, I hope so. Very and the, clean. And the sack man. was bald, clean. so that's good. Yeah, that's a good sign. Not hey, you know what? Not not any stink off it. And I was pretty close to that goddamn thing. Yeah, uh, probably GB'd up, gold bonded. Yep. But probably went the green because he's a big, he's a big dude. Probably used to that that type of heat down there on the danglers. Mm-hmm. So I think he went the green bottle of gold bond, and uh, you know what you got to go trick is the middle finger down your gooch. Oh yeah, you don't want to leave that on that the ooh. You don't you don't just hop on down no. to uh, the wife and kids. That's where the sweat and then goes. Leave, leave your grandparents out in the rain. You gotta you gotta cup that up and get that middle finger on that gooch. Yep. Uh, again, if you're watching the video show on YouTube, I'd highly recommend it because uh, that middle finger right there is where it just gotta toe the line on that gerbil catwalk. Uh, let's get to the drinking bro of the week. You got one? I'm going to keep it in theme with, uh, uh, with the ladies, um, all of the parents uh, who were at the school board meeting last night who did not get a chance to speak. Sure. 
Um, because this is a like look, this is partially a military town as well. There's uh, a ton of military here. Yeah. Ton of military here. So the reason why a lot of husbands weren't there were you know some of them were deployed or uh at other bases and things like that and uh man i did suck for those ladies they didn't get to to speak um so hopefully matthew crapper will hear their voices now at crapper gis at fucking six one four four five one one two four two and just just scream out free mason burrow forest uh ladies you did a great job with uh putting everything together uh and trying and this is by the way this is not just my neighborhood this was all the neighborhoods yeah and all of the women there and um I went because I love my children and uh, I wanted to see what it was like. And I would, I would have felt bad if I would have missed a meeting like that. That's why we got the late flight home from the cruise that night. And uh, yeah. So uh, thanks for listening. She got weird today. It always does, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, we talked about vibrating butt plugs. We yep. talked about school boards. Um, school boards. Nutsacks. We talked about uh, killing people in jail. Killing people in jail and, you know, jacking off in Porta Johns. Yeah. So. Uh, I think we pretty, pretty much normal. Uh, pretty normal show, yeah. We did it. We did it. Uh, for Danthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>